Just a disclaimer before this video begins. This was a paid fan request video. Special thanks to the Queen Diclonus for supporting me. With that being said, let's get into the video. Prior to making this video, I had never heard of this show. Most of the info I got before watching came from Queen who requested I look into this show. Reboot was a Canadian computer animated CGI TV series, noted for being one of the first of its kind. CGI was always primitive in the 1990s. From what I understand in fact, Terminator 2 only had effective special effects because it had a crazy expensive budget. That movie relied on a high budget for all it was working to achieve. When the Star Wars prequels were being made, a lot of the technology had to be invented, and damn did it look pretty impressive. Perhaps it was pushing boundaries, but you're not going to move forward until you do that. It's what a lot of prequel haters don't get. Since Reboot was first aired in 1994, the CGI and the animation on top of that was pretty rough. Now, I was told Season 1 wasn't that good but that the show improves a lot substantially over the course of the series. After watching season 1 alone, I can say that the show was pretty dated, extremely cheesy and corny, questionable animation, and generic voice acting. This is my complete review of Reboot Season 1. Now, since this is a kid's show, I have to keep that in mind, but still, this show has a lot of problems. Season 1 has 13 episodes, so not that long, but the thing is, all the episodes say for the last two are standalone, and all are self-contained. So let's get into it. The first episode, or the pilot, I found to be quite ineffective at setting up the world. The first episode treats itself like you already know who the characters are and stuff, so I was completely lost. I quickly noticed that Reboot has a really small cast. There's basically the main trio, Bob, Dot Matrix, and her brother Enzo. I don't know how I would even describe the setting. It takes place in a computer-like setting, but I couldn't exactly grasp on what the setting is exactly beyond that. In episode 1, titled The Tearing, the whole conflict drops us into the middle of the story almost, with Bob being asked a favor from the main antagonist, Megabyte. This guy has a stereotypical British villain's voice, and he isn't very intimidating, especially since he is easily defeated a lot, especially in Season 1, I'm told. You'll see what I mean. So basically, since Bob doesn't want to help Megabyte with his favor, he proceeds to send some henchmen to trash his friend's Dot's diner. Of course, we get some cookie-cutter dialogue. The dialogue, as mentioned before, is cheesy, along with the generic voice acting. Seriously, these guys could feel like they could be in another kid's show, and we wouldn't know the difference. Also, the trio is pretty cliche and tropish. A man, a woman, and a kid. I guess they are distinguishable from each other, but something about them felt so generic. And as I said, the dialogue is extremely dumbed down. Kids shows and movies can be more clever and witty than this. Come on, guys. Also, Megabyte is later established as a virus who's been able to evade deletion. When Bob seeks out advice for what he should do in regards to Megabyte offering him a favor, there's this old sensei looking guy named Fong, who in all of his appearances, at least in season 1, requires a game of Pong in order to get his advice. I'm not even going to question that, because despite how silly it sounds, it's not a cheesy gimmick I guess? Anyways, after Bob beats Fong at his own game, Fong tells him to stay far away from Megabyte. But what happens next? He ignores said advice and meets up with Megabyte. What? What was the point of that scene if he's not going to listen to it? Meanwhile, Megabyte just has a sinister voice in play. Turns out the favor is to enter a supercomputer and steal stuff. Bob at this point refuses, since by now he's able to put two and two together. Also, Bob is commonly referred to as a guardian. What the hell is that? I don't know, the show doesn't really explain it. Then Bob tries to escape when Dot is also captured, and they flee together. Megabyte pursues him and utters his own version of two classic Star Wars lines. Leaving? So soon? How rude. Anyways, they all get sucked into a video game or something, and by this point, I completely lost track. Given how the show doesn't properly explain it, are these characters inside of a personal computer or something? 
I say that because they get sucked into a space fighter video game and they refer to a vehicle with an empty seat as a user. So wait, is there someone in our world actually playing this game? Maybe. The show doesn't really explain it. What a terrible pilot. You should be establishing all the rules here. This is what I mean. They just drop us into the universe and expect us to piece things together. Well, anyways, they form a squadron team and fly off the Megabyte. I'm guessing that this is all meant to be a reference to Star Wars A New Hope. They pursue Megabyte, and I have to say, the music doesn't sound tense enough. It sounds like crappy stock music you get off a website. So yeah, the soundtrack for the show is quite underwhelming. Also, guess how they beat Megabyte. Just take a guess, I dare you. They simply become invisible and convince Megabyte they transported back to Dot's diner. Then Bob recounts the story to Enzo and that's the end. I'm looking at all this and I'm like, seriously? Yeah, I'm glad I listened to the warning I was given. This feels like any other dumb kids show. Not the kind that gets you to come back to a series. But since I'm gonna power through this, time for the next episode. The early show from what I've been told has no continuity or rather barely any. Anyhow, the next episode is really the first that heavily features Enzo and another antagonist, Hexadecimal, who according to Wikipedia is Megabyte's sister. I don't know if this was specifically said in season one or later in the show, but I don't care. It's not really relevant. Point is though, Hexadecimal and Megabyte are enemies. We see this when the episode starts with Enzo having a delivery service. Another thing I'd like to mention is how the voice actors sound like the bare minimum. Bob in particular sounds like generic action hero number 3. Enzo also sounds like generic kid number 2. I've heard this kind of voice a million times, and I've gotten sick of it. I guess Enzo isn't too annoying? That kind of surprised me. So I'll give the show that. Enzo could have been much, much worse. Anyways, Enzo doesn't get any delivery orders until contacted by... Megabyte. Yeah, Megabyte. Contacts Enzo and gives Enzo a package he needs to deliver to Hexadecimal. Enzo completely forgets about the shit Megabyte has done. Trusting the villain like this is a kid's story cliche that I fucking hate. I'm going to be super generous and assume this episode takes place before Megabyte gave the main heroes so much shit. Enzo easily accepts the package delivery job, being told not to tell Hexadecimal who the package is from. Enzo gets super excited for his first job and rushes to tell Bob and Dot what job he's got, and mentions he has to deliver it to Hexadecimal. And then we've got the cliche where the characters realise what was said to them was bad news, and they yell what the bad news was out loud. Hope you know what I'm talking about. That is such a tired trope. And it's not funny. Anyways, before Enzo leaves to deliver the package, Bob and Dot confront him and they assume it's a bomb. Bob scans the package and sees that it's a mask. Enzo, because he's stupid, is eager to deliver it because reasons. So Dot gets Bob to deliver the package. This all ends up with Hexadecimal launching Bob and the mask at Megabyte's place. And this show has an identical formula. I suppose the user turned on another video game, which I'll just say is Forza for the sake of things. It's pretty much a given that there's going to be a game played in every single episode. The race isn't very important. It's more about warning Bob about the bomb before it's too late. Also, now I realize where that line from Cars 2 came from. Your car is a bomb! You're telling me! It only comes with one nitro! Oh my god, why would you do that, Pixar? God damn it. Anyways, the game gets corrupted and the trio run and then the episode ends with Megabyte firing Enzo and getting his two lackeys to deliver a package and that goes as well as you expect. Jesus, we're only up to episode 3? Life sucks. Anyways, on to episode 3, which is titled Quick in the Fed. The episode starts with Megabyte doing something evil with a magnet. When Bob shows up to save the day on a hoverboard, he takes the magnet and seals it in a case. Also, I should have mentioned this earlier, but Megabyte looks like a reject Transformers villain. 
Bob goes to Dot's diner with the magnet, and you realize the only reason he did this was so that the magnet, which was established as dangerous, could get loose and do something wrong. Enzo is extremely excited to see Bob and jumps on him. And Bob settling down in the diner, he gives his gadget to Enzo, and the gadget in question can turn into any tool the user wishes. After turning it into a bunch of tools, Enzo turns it into a jackhammer, which pummels into the ground and causes the case to be knocked over. Snapping open and attaching itself to Dot, this is the most convenient, stupid setup ever. Why Bob didn't dispose of it before going to the diner is beyond me. Well, here's our conflict of the episode. Savoring Dot from being terminated or erased or whatever. Bob goes over to Fong, and despite being in a desperate situation, Fong still forces him to play Pong again to gain his help. Yeah, that's another problem. Fong should clearly know that this isn't the time. Locking all of his advice behind a Pong game is silly. Well anyways, after being beat, Fong tells Bob to order slow food, which is literally what it sounds like. The opposite of fast food. Where did they come up with this stuff? Yeah, so all this is used for is dumbass jokes and gags with Bob getting frustrated that the slow food is coming out slow. This was not funny at all. I was completely deadpan. Anyways, Megabyte sends some goons to find Bob, and this leads to a chase sequence, and this ultimately leads into the next game being played. It's basically a game where two knights have to get to the princess first. That's such a generic idea for a game. How many times have you seen that? When Bob enters the castle, the game sort of becomes Skyrim, at least what I've played of it. The whole thing turns out to be a waste of time at the end, when it turns out Dot just had slow food delivered to her. So the whole thing is rendered pointless. And then Megabyte demands the magnet back, and so Bob throws it at his forehead and he falls down. The end of episode 3. In episode 4, Megabyte steals something from Hexadecimal, which is the Medusa bug, and it turns out to be a trap, since it turns into stone, and soon afterwards, everything in mainframe. The trio who go on a picnic, first encounter the effects of the Medusa bug, when Enzo's dog tries running away from it, and gets frozen. They go to Fong, and he says that Bob is immune because he's a guardian, and that's it. Such a lazy explanation if I've ever seen it. I don't even know what that means. It's almost like saying someone is immune to coronavirus because grass is green. The entirety of Mainframe gets frozen, except for Bob, and when confronting Hexadecimal, the confrontation ends not in a final fight, but rather easily talking Hexadecimal into bringing everything back to normal. Why? Because everything will be boring and predictable now that everything is frozen and Hexadecimal as a character hates that. Why did you create the Medusa bug in the first place then you stupid goose? Believe me, I'm trying my best to generalize the criticisms I make about this show. Because if I went into specifics, I'd be here forever. Episode 5 proved to be the worst episode yet. The main conflict is Bob and Dot having a falling out in the most cliche way. Every generic kids show has this. This is no exception. The falling out on top of that is so weak. It starts over a petty disagreement concerning Bob taking Enzo out to do shit and Dot not agreeing with that. That's nowhere near believable incentive enough for a friendship to die, especially how it's presented. So basically Enzo has to try and make them friends again. When asked, Fong tells Enzo that it's best solved by tragedy or apology, whatever that means. So Enzo comes up with a plan to stage a fake kidnapping by Megabyte to get both Bob and Dot to come save him, in the hopes that they will work together and renew their friendship. It obviously doesn't work. So next, Enzo decides to send a fake message to both, pretending to be Dot and Bob respectively, to Bob and Dot, saying sorry in the most cheesy way. Well, this doesn't last long, as both realize quickly that neither actually apologized to the other. And before long, the next game starts. It's a prison break game that sort of reminds me of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, except more forgettable. Of course, this game requires classic teamwork to solve, and then Bob and Dot are magically friends again. This is pathetic. In the episode after that, 
Megabyte extorts a mechanic or something for a jewel. Megabyte gets his minions to search around for it, and the one who finds it is blasted by Megabyte. The villain kills his own men cliche again. Megabyte literally killed someone who succeeded at their job, so this is pretty inexcusable. As I've established, the villain kills his own men cliche always takes me out of the story when it happens. Well, point is, Enzo's dog swallows the thing, and basically the whole episode revolves around Enzo and his dog escaping from the clutches of Megabyte. The fact that a kid can overpower Megabyte is pathetic. While Megabyte probably has the best voice actor, pretty much the only one in the series thus far, his goons are incompetent and drag him down. It didn't help that he vaporized the minion who actually did his job without screwing up. This episode is mostly forgettable, and I pretty much skimmed through it. It was that uninteresting. Episode 7 has the stereotypical robot pirates who plunder and whatnot. They serve as the main threat in this episode. They capture Bob and Enzo and Dot have to get him back. So far, this might be the best episode because of the cheesy stereotypical depiction of pirates. It's the corniest thing I've ever seen, but it somewhat carries the episode. This all results in a pirate sword fight that exists in all the movies about pirates. Then it ends with Dot negotiating with the pirates, which is extremely anticlimactic. In episode 8, Enzo wants to become more smart, and so he resorts to changing mainframe, but instead of making him more smart, it just makes everyone around him more stupid. There's a bunch of terrible jokes that make everyone around Enzo out to be stupid, and it's just pure cringe. The game of the episode is a sports competition like the Olympics, and once Enzo's done, he switches everything back to normal. The stakes felt extremely low, especially since Megabyte or anyone else wasn't in it. A lame disappointment of an episode. Episode 9 was ironically maybe kinda okay. The reason I say that is because it has the main good guys, plus Mike the TV, which reminds me of Mike TV from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In name only though. For the most part, Mike the TV is basically a sponsor and advertisement joke, who spouts out a bunch of references I don't recognize. Basically the main heroes, plus Mike the TV, get sucked into a role playing video game where the key message is teamwork. Yeah. They have to go through 66 levels of torture. Ironic. And face many enemies. Apparently this is based on an actual role playing game, but when I personally play RPGs, it tends to be stuff like Fallout or Knights of the Old Republic. I don't like the fantasy or medieval stuff much. Although the RPG is so generic looking, it's basically the go into the dungeon and fight enemies type of game. In case you haven't noticed so far, all the other games have such terrible, simplistic premises, but I guess the group's chemistry is a tad improvement over what it's been for most of the show. So I'm gonna throw a bone and say they did alright with this episode. Episode 10, The Great Brain Robbery, recycles a cartoon trope I've seen at least thrice, go inside people's bodies. Basically, Megabyte contracts someone called Mouse to infiltrate Bob's brain, but shock and horror, they end up entering Enzo's brain accidentally instead. As I've been told, Mouse is a character that appears in episodes after season 1, but here, she just seems like an underwhelming mercenary character. Which is how I describe everything else in this show, in case you haven't noticed. Mouse is easily swayed to bail out on her mission, way too easily, and Megabyte loses again. I love how characters are so easily convinced in this show. It's getting old. Episode 11 is definitely the weirdest and most out of place from premise alone. Talent Night is about Enzo's birthday, and a talent show being held in his honor. Dot and a random robot with a screechy voice judge all the talent entries. There's a bunch of references to things that surprise me. One of the talent bands does YMCA, and another sings Rocket Man by Elton John. I'm being serious. For most of the episode, there's no conflict. It's just pop culture references and stupid gags. Apparently, Megabyte is upset that he wasn't invited. This is so stupid. Why would you feel left out if you're the guy who likes to seclude himself in his fortress? I don't get it. 
Literally at the end of the episode, Megabyte shows up, does a guitar solo, and then gives Enzo his guitar as a present. What? This is extremely out of character for the antagonist of this show. The most I could accept this as is a non-canon holiday special or something. I mean, technically the episodes are standalone, but that's not the point. This episode was... okay, I guess. So I guess I'll throw another bone. It was weird as fuck, and it had a stereotypical formulaic cartoon trope, better suited to something like Minecraft, but I'll count this as a not bad episode, simply due to the fact that it pays homage to a lot of stuff. This might have the most pop culture references as a matter of fact. To cap the season off, we've got a two-parter. Yeah, a two-parter, let's talk about it. It's called Identity Crisis Part 1 and 2. The episode focuses on Bob and Dot, going to liberate a sector under the influence of Megabyte, and something to do with PIDs, and since the show doesn't explain the terminology in play, I was totally confused. It's like when Bob in the intro says he's the guardian of mainframe, without telling us what that means exactly. Well, anyways, Enzo is completely absent from most of the episode, which is a positive, because he was annoying as hell. Not as annoying again, but still annoying. Since there's a lack of explanation and thereby a lack of context, the people in Megabyte Sector transfer their souls to a data pad or something before Megabyte shows up to ruin everyone's day. Apparently, Fong is a mission debriefer. There's a mission debriefer known as Cyrus, and he's a supporting character who betrays Dot in order to become Megabyte's lieutenant. Given the stakes are not exactly set up, again, I don't know what's going on for sure. I can only infer based on a lack of information. The episode ends on a cliffhanger with the start of a super hard game called Funhouse, which is a game full of clowns. They get stuck in this game, and the following episode, Dot has a conflict where she sees a possible future where Megabyte has enslaved Mainframe, or as it's known in this reality, Megaframe. This is basically the classic dark reality a lot of cartoons have. Again, this show is super formulaic. The whole thing is basically a dystopia that has nothing original about it. This pushes Dot to finish the game, and after some dedication, she finishes the game. And with the remaining time, she flies over to Megabyte who is encrypting the PID and gets him to turn against Cyrus by making him think that he's a traitor. And then that's it. The encryption is reversed and that's all, folks. I can't believe it. So if you couldn't tell, I don't like reboots first season. To sum up my problems, overlooking the dated CGI, the music is generic, the characters are limited and formulaic, the episodes were cookie cutter, and the voice acting was... bad. The villains were unintimidating, and many other factors that make me say that I cannot recommend season 1. I watched all the episodes. Each episode had at least one cartoon cliché. As well as that, the show doesn't explain the rules of the universe very well. That's why I didn't particularly care for when Bob says that he's a guardian, because what does that even mean? I sincerely hope that the series improves with its writing and presentation. I can forgive the dated CGI. It's one of the first, and someone was going to attempt to show sooner or later with CGI. I'm probably going to take a long break before I look at season 2 onwards. I give Reboot Season 1 a 3.5 out of 10. And JJ Plagiarisms. And until next time, what are stories about mystery boxes? Under the mountain.